back. I won't bore you with the details of my miraculous escape. Instead, let's talk a little bit about Channel Saver. We're going to investigate how control voltage operates, both what it does and how it flows within the system. In a modular system, voltage is the language. Every jack either accepts or outputs voltage. This is true regardless of the type of signal. Audio, envelope, LFO, gate, trigger, clock, probably more. Voltage is the language. This, of course, is one of the first things you learn when you patch up a modular. But there's another key element that might be easier to overlook, and that is that knobs also speak the language of voltage. In most cases, the panel control is connected to a parameter just like an input jack might be. It generates a voltage that determines the value of that parameter. For example, the pitch knob on a VCO. Recall VCO stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. When you turn up the knob, you increase the voltage by which you are controlling the frequency of the oscillator. It might range from, say, 0 to 8 volts, which would result in an 8 octave pitch sweep when we turn it through its full range. Your typical oscillator also has at least one frequency jack, usually labeled volt per octave. Notice that when you patch a voltage into this jack, such as the voltage generated by channel 1 of the channel saver, the voltage is added to the value of the pitch knob. So for example, with that knob set all the way down, we can add about 5 octaves using this channel saver channel. We can reach further up by turning up the oscillator's pitch knob since the two voltages are added together or summed prior to being received by the VCO. If we turn the panel control all the way up, we can also see the effect of subtracting voltage. Channel saver creates a negative voltage when it's south of midnight, so the further counterclockwise we turn it, the further down the pitch goes from whatever is set by the panel control. Now, a static voltage such as those created by these knobs is often called an offset. To demonstrate why, let's add another signal into the mix. Here we'll patch some random voltage from the woggle bug. Notice that the total range of this voltage is essentially the entire range of the parameter. If it's patched directly into the volt per octave input, it's hitting maximum very easily. Turning up the panel control offsets it, creating a sort of minimum value. For example, if I turn the panel control up to noon, this positive random voltage will never push the oscillator below that noon value since it's positive only and is always added to that knob setting. Aside from extreme sound effects, this is usually not going to be a useful range for a patch like this. This is where it might become useful to attenuate the signal. When we patch into Channel Saver's Channel 1, the offset is removed from this output, and instead it now passes through the signal that we have patched to it. We use the knob to amplify or attenuate the signal sort of like expanding or contracting it. So now, if we take the channel output through to the VCO, we can hear it at full strength, but we can also now attenuate it, say, decreasing its range from eight volts to more like one or two volts, but maintaining the same shape that it had at full amplitude. Additionally, if we do turn the attenuator knob left of midnight, then it will change from positive to negative, inverting it like flipping it upside down. Now we're adding a negative voltage to the value set by the panel control. In other words, subtracting from that value. This might be a good time to show why the panel control can also be referred to as an offset. We use it to offset the starting point of whatever voltage is incoming. 
If we set it higher, then the random voltage starts from a higher point. If we set it lower, then it starts from a lower point. Utilizing the offset and the attenuverter together is the key to getting very precise modulations within the system. As it lets us set a starting point, a direction, and a range for whatever signal we're using. In the make noise system, many parameters have both an offset and an attenuverter included. For example, the frequency control of the QPOS. Anywhere you see two knobs connected to a single CV input jack, it is likely you'll be able to patch up this kind of precise modulation without the need for an additional utility like channel saver. You might wonder, why doesn't every single parameter have this setup? There are a number of reasons. Size and cost are one. The more knobs and jacks on your system, the bigger it's going to be, the more it's going to cost. But there are design reasons too. Some inputs have an attenuator instead of an attenuverter. For example, the final output timbre controls on the DPO. This setup doesn't make the module any smaller, but it makes it easy to turn any modulation completely off by just turning the attenuator all the way down. Since these parameters are typically modulated by waveforms from the other side of the DPO, which are bipolar, the ability to turn them fully off is more commonly useful than the ability to invert them. But a module like Channel Saver would let us patch inversion in whenever we need it. Another thing to think about is that each module has its own shape, layout, and flow. This gives them an identity in our subconscious and lets us play them without having to worry about differentiating between different parameters by reading labels. Different parameters get different sizes and numbers of knobs depending on their identity within the system, and this gives the modules a shape and layout that we learn intuitively through use. As the Eurorack format has grown and the number of available modules increases, there's often been a trend toward making modules smaller, which usually means either putting the knobs and jacks closer together, making them less comfortable and fun to play, or even removing some knobs altogether, making it harder to dial in modulation with precision. When we look back at early Eurorack modules from before 2010, they may look luxuriously large to our eyes today. Of course, even at that time, the Eurorack format was considered sort of a miniaturization of modular. The size constraints very quickly led module designs in a particular direction. When you look at older patchable synths, you'll often see that they have fewer parameters to control, but more inputs mixed together to control them with. For example, on a mini Moog or its mono synth descendants, you have panel controls, dedicated envelope generators, keyboard tracking, and often also one or more LFOs, all summed together to modulate a single parameter input, the filter frequency. The ARP 2600's filter section has three CV inputs normal to a single parameter, once again, the frequency. Comparatively, the QPOS does have two filter frequency inputs, but also two radiate inputs, a VCA input, a resonance input, and two wildcard gate inputs. So as a broad generalization, we have moved toward more parameters to modulate, but perhaps sometimes a bit less nuance and mixing prior to that modulation. Thus, one big benefit of a module like Channel Saver is the ability to mix multiple signals together before patching them to a parameter. As we saw before, when we use CV, we are almost always mixing, which is to say adding or summing two different signals together, the one generated by the knob and the one coming in from the CV source. With the channel saver, we can mix up to four signals in addition to said knob, and we'll get that mix at the sum output. For example, let's modulate this QPOS frequency input with a random voltage, a pressure out from press point, and a sine wave from STO for some audio rate frequency modulation. We'll take the sum output. We can set the level and polarity of the first two. 
some Eurorack modules you may find some CV inputs that do not have any knob associated with them at all. In that case you could utilize an unpatched channel 1 or 2 to create an offset. This is not something you'll find on make noise modules. However there are some modules where we have just one knob for a CV input instead of two. For example on the herb verb the pre-delay parameter does not come with an attenuator just an input and an offset. The knob offsets the start point and any incoming voltage is added from there. It could be useful to utilize the channel saver to attenuate or invert any voltage that you'd like to use to control this parameter. Verbs mix and the DXG's control parameters are examples of what we call a combo pot. It functions as a panel control, but when the CV input is patched, it removes the offset, similar to the way that the channel saver's top two channels do. At this point, it becomes an attenuator for the incoming voltage. Typically when we include a combo pot, it is on a parameter that would normally be modulated from zero to some higher value by a unipolar voltage. Since the DXG is typically used for note creation, you'll usually patch an envelope and the output will go silent between events. This design gives the DXG a particular shape, size, and patch flow for usefulness and identity within the system. But there may be a time when you would prefer to modulate from some starting point other than zero. In this case, you could patch the sum of channel saver to the CV input, turn up the combo pot, and then use one of the channel offsets to set the starting point. You could patch your other modulation to a different channel. Thank you. 
things we've shown here can of course be done by maths as well with the added benefits of function generation, slew limiting, etc. But the ability to perform these simple functions such as mixing, inverting, attenuating, and offsetting is universally useful in a modular synthesizer for anybody who has any interest in expressive musical nuance. In this system, I'm not only running two maths and a channel saver, but also an additional small voltage math circuit in the CV bus, and to date there's never been a time when I felt like I was wasting space in my system. These concepts and patches are useful no matter what types of voltage and audio generators and processors you might be using. Voltage is the language, and the maths family of control voltage utility modules are the punctuation, the phrasing, the vocabulary, Thanks for watching, and happy patching.